Good evening, class. I am Dominique Clark, and today I'm going to talk to you about the reading that I chose for this week. The, so the book that I chose is going to be Thomas Kidd's George Whitfield's America's Spiritual Father. And the specific chapter that I chose to read is going to be chapter five. This chapter specifically deals with his tour around the colonies. As we all know, George Whitfield is going to be a lead Calvinist um, during this time period who is going to be from England. During this time, he felt as if the colonists is going to forsake God as well as um, Calvinism is under attack due to this um, enlightenment period that are net, that is now teaching individuals how to think about how they should be governed and the whole idea of religion. He's one of his biggest um, critics during this time is going to be a gentleman by the name of John Wesley. Um, John Wesley believes that predestination is going to be not only irrational, but it's also unreasonable. John Wesley was not the only advocate against or critic against Calvinism. You're going to have other individuals who are going to speak out against Calvinism on the basis that they want a God that is benevolent rather than a God that is sovereign. So they want to em emphasize the good things in God and not push this merciless God that um, sends you to hell no matter what you do because you were born to go there. Okay. Um, he realized that it was a little more easier to make allies in America than it was back at home. Unfortunately, enemies are going to come any way that it goes. However, he was able to build some great relationships. He realized that done Anglicans in America were his biggest supporters. The biggest critics and the biggest kickback that he received is from his fellow Anglicans. He see that church in, in England, revival was kind of one type of people. Anglican Methodist. But here in America, those revivals are going to be totally different. They're going to include people of all races and all denominations. Um, one reason why revivals were successful in America to him in his eyes in this chapter, because they were allowed in England, no good word of God came outside of the four walls of the church. Therefore, they didn't even give you the opportunity to speak. But in America, um, we were willing or they were willing, I'm sorry, to participate to participate in outdoor um, revivals. One of his favorite places to visit, according to this chapter, is going to be Philadelphia. He loved Philadelphia for so many reasons. He became a big fan and friend of Benjamin Franklin, who often published his papers in the Philadelphia Gazelle, as well as his sermons. Um, this was the ideal spot for that Negro school that he wanted um, to build. He was also intrigued by the religious liberty that took place in Philadelphia. So Philadelphia, according to him, was his favorite colony. Um, as he arrived south, things kind of began to change. He did not or he he didn't really discuss slavery before then. But as he got further down south, it was no way that he can deny it or not address it. Um, as he crossed the Ches Chesapeake, um, he pretty much said the manner in which religion was carried out was different. You saw people up north a little more enthusiastic. Um, once he crossed the Chesapeake, he quoted that Anglicans of the Chesapeake are more dead to God, but far less prejudiced. It's going to be harder for him to gain big crowds in the South because masters don't want their slaves to be attending religious meetings and everybody is so far away, okay? He's going to continue South down into North Carolina, which he felt that is the colony that had the least amount of hope. South Carolina, especially Charleston, had a bit, it had potential, but one thing that he did not like is the congregations were boring. In his, in his words, he said that they were dry bones, okay? Um, they were too boring. Um, so 
as he continues down north, he's going to finally finish his tour in Savannah, Georgia, which is a city that I actually went to college in. So I actually understand how he felt when he went into Savannah. It is a beautiful city. He's going to establish Bethesda, which means the House of Mercy is going to be his most prized orphanage. Um, a gentleman by the name of Habersham is going to buy off 500 acres of land. And there is where he's going to build his school, a school that is still there today. So this chapter pretty much just deals with his tour, which he started. And he went from New York all the way to Savannah. And he was very proud of that because he was the only individual at that time to do so, preaching the gospel. Thank you for listening. And I hope you enjoyed. Thank you.